In this video, I'm going to show you how to interpret the results of a decision tree to make business decisions. In this scenario, we have an organization that provides vacation travel packages. And let's say they're cultural uh, packages with some special features that are attractive to people with cultural sensitivities. And also they have lots of family uh, friendly features. And they are part of a hotel chain that has a lot of historical information about past clients who have stayed in their hotels over the years. And they would like to leverage their data set of past clients to see who would be interested in these special vacation packages. So the decision tree we have here is, first of all, an upside down tree. And the upside down tree of a decision tree begins at the roots on top, and then it goes downwards through the branches. And the nodes at the end are called the leaves. So that's the general structure of a decision tree. It's an upside down tree. Uh, in the root node here, it shows all the different clients here. And let's say you have roughly here you have around 5,000 clients, and we're going to look at the rates and probabilities. Well, the rates and probabilities are about the same, but we're going to look at the rates. So the proportion of clients from the past as this decision tree uh, detected them. The information we have about the clients is first the income level, the entire family income, and this is in, uh, in euros, so 99 is 99,000 euros as family income. Then education levels, so education levels of the clients, education level one means the highest education is a high school diploma or a baccalaureate degree, a baccalaureate diploma. Education level two is a bachelor's degree or license. And education level three is master's degree or higher. Then there's also family size. If the family size is one, that means there's just a single person who's a uh, client who's stayed in a hotel. Family size two uh, is for a married couple. And family size three means that the couple has at least one child. So that's significant. Family size three means at least one child or more. Okay. So the way to so the, the key issue or the business challenge here is that to contact the clients with the vacation packages. The cheapest way is to send email, okay? That costs almost nothing. A little bit uh, more expensive is to send, to actually send something in postal mail, which costs about one euro per uh, contact, including the printing, packaging, the postage. Then the more expensive uh, way of contacting clients would be to make an actual telephone call, which costs five to 10 euros per call because of the time involved in the agents uh, talking to the client. So ideally, the company would like to, well, send emails to everyone, that's a given, but most people don't respond to the email offers. So they would like to, uh, to call those who are most likely to say yes and not waste their calls on those who are more likely to say no. So this decision tree analysis is to guide them as to which means of contact should they spend on each client. So the decision tree, after they ran on their data set, came up with these results here. And the results uh, are either, so red means that a customer said no to the offer. So these are past customers that have been offered similar uh, packages in the past to kind of determine what might be done in the future. And blue, the customer said yes uh, to the offer in the past. So out of 5,000 uh, past customers, uh, overall, they found that those who said yes, there were 480 uh, who said yes. So almost 10% said yes, and 90% said no. So that's what you typically expect. Then the decision tree broke it down to show that those whose family income is less than 99,000 euros, of those, you had 99% who said no, and only 1% who said yes. Then 
But for those who were above, family income above 99,000, so first the count tells you there's around 1,200 of those, so a good number. Um, that, so, so that good number is almost 25% of your data set. And those with high income, 36% said yes, and only 64% said no. So you already know that high income um, customers are more likely to say yes, but the decision tree breaks it down further to that. Based on the education levels of the high income, those who are of higher education went up to 75% who actually said yes, and only 25%, 75% said yes, only 25% of the higher income, higher education, higher income people said yes. So you definitely know that that's a major target. But as long as you're still talking about higher income, you can't just dismiss them. Even though of those who are um, with lower education, only 11% said yes. But the decision tree breaks down further that if you look at the family size of those who are high income but lower education, well, those who had at least one child, so that's family size three or more, 79% said yes. Whereas those who either were single or just a married couple, only 1% said yes. And this is the outcome of the, de of the decision tree. So if you look at just one node, this final load, the path or the rule of the decision tree is that start from the top. If income is greater than or equal to 99,000 and education is level one, and the family size is three or more, then the probability that they'll say yes is 78%, or the rate of those who said yes is 79%. So that is how you read a decision tree. So the business uh, insight here would be, well, if they are low income, just send them an email. Maybe a few will say yes, but don't, don't count on it. You're focusing on higher income uh, customers. For those who are higher income, um, well, you might maybe send everyone a mailing. And the thing, when, once you send, send the email, some of the high probability people say yes right away, and you've got them. Then maybe 36% of higher income people will say uh, yes. You could then send a mailing to all the higher income people, and just one euro each but then you wait a while and some of them will say yes but when those of uh, those who don't respond then you only call those higher income who are also higher level of education they have a higher chance of saying yes 75 percent saying yes but for those with lower education you only call those with at least one child who have a chance of 78 79 percent saying yes you're, you're investing your marketing funds, uh, the more expensive marketing funds of calling only on those with high probability of saying yes, but you start with the lower uh, means by email and mailing of those with lower probabilities.